Good morning. Hello, Manduka. My name is Heather Askinosi, and I am a crystal expert, and I am one of the co-founders of Energy Muse, and I would like to introduce my Energy Muse as well. So good morning, you guys. Hello, Manduka. Hello, Energy Muse. So happy to be here. My name is Heather Askinosi. I am a crystal lover. I've been in the crystal world for about 28 years now. And um, I'm one of the owners of Energy Muse. And what we do is we are honored to be here today with all you yogis to talk about crystals and how you can use crystals in your everyday life. And so um, Timmy and I started this company um, 23 years ago. And our mission and our intention are, how can we help people use crystals, the energy, the earth tools, and utilize them on an everyday basis? So um, my background was I'm a spiritual seeker. I've been in every, um, involved in how do you heal your mind, body, and spirit. I got into the world of crystals because I used to sell high-end real estate and I used to do feng shui for a living. And I came up with a necklace that Timmy's gonna talk to you about right now. It's called Prosperity. I gave it to 10 people and asked them to see what they felt. All 10 people came back and said, my life changed after wearing it. And this is how Energy Muse started 23 years later. So I'm gonna let Timmy share with you the magic of our prosperity necklace and how it's helped thousands and thousands of thousands of people all over the world. Hi everyone, I'm Timmy Jandro. I am the other owner of Energy Muse and it's a great honor to be with you today and to be with my best friend for almost 50 years. Heather and I started this business 23 years ago, as she said, based on this one piece of jewelry called prosperity. So it has a feng shui energy. Um, Heather designed it with jade crystals. And then we used to use Chinese coins, but we can't get those anymore. So the pyrite donut pendant takes the place of the Chinese coin. When tied with red string brings prosperity. So as Heather said, I was one of 10 people that she gave it to. And I was kind of in this flux time of my life. I had been in the garment business for many years was selling all of the big box retailers, and it really wasn't serving me anymore. There wasn't really a purpose or a mission in my life. So I left that industry. Heather gave me this, I wore it, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be open to it. I know nothing about crystals like many of you. You probably haven't worked with them as much as others, possibly, and I wore it openly. And people were literally going, oh my gosh, what is that? What does it do? I wanna touch it, I want one. And opportunities were coming my way because prosperity wasn't just about money. Prosperity is something you wish someone in the new year for every area of your life, love, health, all of it. So I thought, you know what, Heather, I'm feeling something from this and I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling like there's opportunities. I don't know, I just felt a difference. So I said, let's join forces. And I know how to get these uh, made because of my background. And it was a perfect uh, partnership because Heather had the crystal information. She has taught me so much and I've learned by osmosis, by wearing it and being around this for over almost 25 years. And this is the necklace that we still uh, sell 23 years later, same formula, it will never change. Crystals, um, what are so cool about things like prosperity is they never go out of style. So the same formula that worked 23 years ago works today. So anyway, that's the prosperity story and why we are here. Yay, so the intention of the live today, I wanted to say, okay, I love Manduka because I'm a yogi. I've been a yogi for, I don't know, over 28 years. And some of my favorite mats have been Manduka mats. So today to have the honor of being here at this live, Celebrating Manduka's newest collection, Unearth the Vibration. Oh my gosh, so, so excited. So I just wanna say how thank you for letting us be part of it. Thank you, Manduka, for having such an amazing brand that we get to talk about today. So, 
I know Timmy. All I, right. I know so what we're going to start out with is we always like to just start with energy, right? Because crystals are energy. And we're going to use our daily crystal inspiration card deck. And there are 52 different crystals. And what we're going to do is um, please comment and chat so that we can pull a card for some lucky person today on the live. I'm shuffling them. I'm getting them ready for you. And Sarah, who is helping us out, is going to let us know who gets the lucky pull. Let's choose one for Sarah Ezrin Yoga. Sarah, this is for you, Ezrin Yoga. All right. Your card is Black Kyanite. Uh, set strong boundaries. So, Sarah, I don't know if that is something that resonates with you right now in your life, setting strong boundaries, maybe with people, with um, maybe just environments or situations. But Black Kine is a really great stone to use when you are uh, trying to do so. So we'd love to hear if that resonates with you, Sarah, because this is your card. So today I want to talk to you guys about how can we use crystals in our everyday life? And I don't know about you, but for me, I just want to keep it simple. Life is so, uh, so this is when we use the energy of the earth and our breath and our yoga and our lifestyle, and we bring it all together. Crystals are an earth tool. You are the power. You are the creator. You're the one who's like, you know what? I want to get more grounded. I'm going to hold on to a piece of the earth and I'm just going to hold on and I'm going to set an intention. So let's just keep it super simple today. Like get up, getting up in the morning. You know what? I'm going to use positive words. I'm going to use maybe a yoga pose to help me say, this is my intention for the day. I'm going to hold a piece of crystal. I'm going to put it in the hand, my hand. I'm going to put it over my heart. And I'm just going to say, you know, today the words that I say are blessed. I am going to help and be compassionate today. And so these are the ways that we could use crystals. We don't need to have them be some big um, extra thing we do. What we want to do is just incorporate them in our daily life by holding them or putting them in our pocket, or even taking them on the yoga mat with us. I know for me, I have loved bringing my crystals to my yoga practice. And just when I'm doing my flow, having the crystals in front of me to see their color, to remind myself what is my intention? How can I connect my mind, body, and spirit, and my breath? How can I be grounded? I know these sound like they're super simple things to do and they're like, oh, is that going to make a difference? It does. Sometimes when we simplify our life and just bring back our light and our intentions by using the energy of the earth to ground ourselves, it really does change our life. And I love that Manduka has said, let's unearth the vibration of stones and the crystals. And how and what does that mean? It's meaning that our common denominator is the energy of the earth. That's what we all have. This is our home. This is where we plant our feet on the ground. So when we are able to use crystals, the energy of the earth, and hold on to them with an intention, with breath, with our yoga mats, we are able to be connected at a higher frequency and we're able to be more grounded so we're better people for ourselves, for our families, for our friends. And then what does that do? It attracts abundance and love. Because I don't know about you guys, have you ever left a yoga class and you feel so grounded? You just got off your mat and you feel so connected that you are just radiating this positive energy and people want to be around you. So let's combine crystals and minerals and all these fun things. So. I know that there's a lot of questions that people ask, and, and I think one of them, Timmy, is one of the ones that I always hear is, why and how to cleanse crystals? So Timmy, sure. please, or please share that with us. I think, Heather, you summed it up beautifully because keeping things simple is what we want to do today. So how do you cleanse crystals? People ask that all the time, and I, I brought a couple of things with us today just to show you. So um, sage is a really great 
cleansing tool and you can use a um, like an iron cast or something that is heat resistant to burn your sage in. And so I'm just going to show you how easy this is. We use this every day um, when we're cleansing our environment. We're cleansing. You could cleanse your mat. You could cleanse yourself before going into a yoga class just so you are really open and um, ready to receive. So you just light the sage and let the smoke burn, right? And you can place it into this heat resistant container. And just to show you like with your crystals, just let the smoke of um, the sage come across the crystals. It's kind of burning out right now, but um, super, super easy. But I wanna show you something really fun too. Let's say you were wearing some jewelry and you wanted to cleanse it. I love showing people this because it's it really, really, really works. So you're gonna see that this piece of jewelry is going in a circle in the smoke. When it starts to pendulum let us back and forth, that means it's cleansed. I did not move it. It literally is doing it with the energy of the smoke and the cleansing. So it's really super simple. Um, Another thing people ask, how do I store my crystals? Sometimes we've got random crystals or jewelry in places we just don't know where to put them. We like to just suggest a selenite bowl, super simple. It keeps all of your crystals in that one place. Selenite's really good because it is a very high energy. I like to wear it around my neck also. Um, and it helps to cleanse your crystals. So it's kind of a cheaper. It's a place to put them and it's a cleansing device. And you can also, um, what do you like, what do you do with your crystals? Um, we can store them. We can take them with us on the go. You can put them in your pocket. I like to put them in my bra. People tease me because sometimes you take your bra off and boom, all your crystals go flying. But these are ways just to have your energy on the go and super simple ways to um, cleanse and keep your energy going with all of your beautiful crystals. So I want to give you guys a secret that I, for me personally, about crystals, I think that have been super important. Sometimes so people are like, oh my God, I, so I'm so overwhelmed. Where do I begin? I personally think crystals kind of show you what they do. So when you look at a crystal just visually, even if you don't know anything, this is amethyst. It's purple. Um, it shows you that gosh it, i feel like this is something that helps me sparkle it helps me connect to my my spiritual path it helps me remember what my intentions are so i wanted just to remind that if you're new to crystals don't be afraid and there's nothing that you can do wrong and the only way that you can begin is similar to how i began many years ago is that i didn't know anything about crystals and my very first crystal was amethyst and for me, amethyst was, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. It's purple. I didn't know anything, but it, I just felt it. And that's what crystals are about, you guys. It's about for us to feel connected to ourselves again, whether it's color, whether it's what it looks like, or whether it's just something that the energy of what it emits, all the answers are right. So today is a new moon, and I don't know if a lot, any of you guys are attuned with the moon or if you follow the moon's energy, but we're so blessed to be with Manduka today and Energy Muse on a new moon because a new moon is a new beginning. It's a day that we can write our wishes down. So if you have 10 wishes that you want to create today, write them down. Use the energy of movement, which is why we love yoga and the breath and our intention because we're so powerful and using crystals. So really quickly, amethyst is purple. It's all about spirituality and contentment. It's about you knowing what's great for you. And don't we all wanna know that? So amethyst is a great starter stone for anybody that's new to crystals because it's all about being on your journey, owning yourself, and trusting yourself for you knowing what's right with you. Selenite is another one. Selenite is all about clearing. If you even say you don't know anything, look at how beautiful this is. It's white, it's clearing, it's purifying. And selenite is aligned with the moon. So it's a great stone to use after. For me, I always use it during Shavasana. I will put a piece on my body 
to at the end of a yoga after being on the manduka mat and just letting all the energy just flow away another one that we have is black tourmaline black tourmaline i like to put at the base of my feet after um, a yoga session and what happens is that's grounding it helps you to connect back into the energy of the earth once again if you don't know about it it's black it's rooted it's connected it's Panchamama, it's Mother Earth, and it's connected. So then we have another crystal, which is my favorite, it's Rose Quartz. It is, and if you guys, if you don't know anything about it, look at it, it's pink. Doesn't it look like love? Like if you were to imagine what love would look like, it would look like Rose Quartz. Oh. It's this beautiful, unconditional energy of love. And what can you do? You put it over your heart. And um, at the end of a yoga session, you could put it over your heart when you're sitting there and you could just tell yourself, I am love. I'm so great that I gave myself this practice, which is why we love Manduka. And we love to have these tools so that we can go within, we can connect to the earth and you can connect through color, through your intention or just the energy of the stones. So, I'd like to pull a second card. Uh, Timmy, do you want to actually, Timmy, why don't you pull sure. a card? And you know, Heather, I love what you're saying about color because you and I wanted to wear color to honor the, um, them introducing the Manduka Amethyst mat. And I feel like the color, like we're vibing with that color. It's just such an uplifting color. It's, it's high really vibe. It's high vibe. High vibe. Okay, so Sarah, let's see who gets to have the second card pulled. Lindsay wanted a card pulled. Lindsay, this is for you. All right, you go. Oh, you know what? We can't make this stuff up, you guys. It's rose quartz. Open up your heart. So, Lindsay, open up your heart to receiving and giving love. Hope that this energy resonates with you. And this is one of Heather's favorite stones, as she mentioned. It's the it's the stone of love. Let's so pull one, one more card. One if we time can. Again, what are the crystals that we can use during Shavasana? So if you have never used crystals at the end of your yoga practice, you are in for a treat. And it's super simple. All you need to do is put a piece of amethyst over. Some people call this their third eye. They're all about intention. You can put this over your heart, rose quartz would go over your heart. Then you can take a piece of selenite and put it right here over your solar plexus and your root chakra. And then when you are laying in Shavasana and you know your feet, you can put a piece of black tourmaline. We have small pieces of black tourmaline. You could find um, these stones all over the place. And you put this at the base. So you have one, two, three, four, you have these, these Simple stones that you could put in a little bag, you can put them in your yoga bag, and at the very beginning of your practice, you lay them in the front, and then um, put black tourmaline at the very base where your feet would go during Shavasana, and lay your stones, and just breathe, and be on your mat, and reclaim your inner calm spirit and magnificence. I'm feeling so calm, Heather. Like, that's just making me go there. That's beautiful. I love it. I love oh. it. So that's what we need to do. Um, when we want to incorporate our yoga, our breath, and the energy of Mother Earth so we can unearth the vibration of our own inner power. Mm. So, Okay, we have right. some questions. Yay! Um, the first question is, how do you choose the right crystal for you? So that is, thank you for asking one of the best questions on planet. Okay, so how you choose is you just choose we all know what's right for us when we trust ourselves. So for you, it might be, God, I love the color. Or I don't know why, I really like what it looks like. Or for some of us, I don't know why, but this feels really good. What is the right answer? All of the above. Because you are the one who is going to be gravitated to what's right for you at this moment. And the best part about it, you can't make a bad decision. Because you know what? It's just the energy of the earth and it's gonna ground you and connect to you. So trust that it's either color, feeling, or visual, and go with it, you will make the right choice. Our second question is, what are some good stones for releasing and bravery? Okay. 
Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but I want to use these stones every day because I think right now, especially what's happening on our planet, is we all are really like, how can we get grounded? How can we release what no longer serves us? So black tourmaline is a very powerful stone for letting go. Because I always look at these um, stones, these black stones, of stones that are almost like a sponge and they help me when we have this attention. I don't want to be, I don't want to have worry anymore. I don't want to have anxiety. Please release this energy and I'll just hold it with my intention. And then after I let go, then I'll say to myself, I want to have the courage to fill that space up that I just let go of. And I'll put my hand over my chest, super simple technique. It only takes like 10 seconds. And I'll let myself know, you know what? I am strong. I'm bold and I have the courage to move forward with whatever I want in my life. Okay, our next question is, do you use pendulums and how would you use one? Timmy, I'm gonna let you answer this because you're much better in the pendulum than I am. You know, it, I use it once in a while. So usually I'll use a pendulum that is crystal based and you always ask for the yes and the no. Now, like Heather was suggesting when you're picking your crystals, or you're asking your pendulum a question, you could work with the pendulum to see which crystal is vibrating with you just to kind of uh, confirm what you're feeling or the intention you wanted to make sure that that crystal is the right one for you. I will say I don't always get it right because some of the questions I have asked don't go the way I thought the pendulum was guiding me to. But again, all of this is go with your gut. Um, I think it's it's a very good form of um, of a tool to use for sure when guiding. Yourself. And also, you know, I think at the end of the day, for all of us on this path, it's for us to surrender. Mm. Ugh, I know that's sometimes so hard, but when we surrender, which is why we all do yoga, where we are offering it over through our sweat and our movement, and we are surrendering. That's how we really get connected, and I definitely think it's how we unearth the vibration of what we want to do that Manduka is inspiring us with this new line. So thank you so much. Yeah, I cannot think of a better way at this moment to stay grounded than by doing yoga. So thank you, Manduka, because grounding, like you said, Heather, being grounded right now is so very important with this energy that's going on. Okay, our next question is, do you guys have any crystal recommendations um, for helping with addiction or breaking an addiction? So Okay, so once again, first of all, thank you for um, having that question because uh, as you know in life, it's having awareness, number one. That's the first thing. But I definitely think for when we're looking for help with addictions on a spiritual level, on an energetic level, amethyst is the go-to because it's a stone of transformation. It is a stone of spiritual connection. And when we get to the point of hey, why, and we start asking our questions when working with a therapist or working with whatever we feel that is right for us, asking those deeper questions. What do I need to see? What, do, what, what triggered in my this and that? Amethyst is something to either wear when you're going through addictive um, clearing and processes or a program. It is a very powerful stone to wear. I think it'll be a nice accompaniment and a friend and a tool and an energy support while one is on the path um, and the bravery to um, have the awareness that that's something that you want to conquer and let go of. So applauding you on that, on that. So Amethyst would definitely be the one on that. Can, can you, the other, the next question is, can you talk a little bit about chakras and crystals and kind of how they relate to each other? Yes, that's like one of my favorite questions, of course. Okay, so we all have really quick seven wheels of energy, right? And when we're in yoga, we want to have all this. So the first chakra is about, it's red. It's about your foundation and your um, and your like grounding energy. So I like to use black tourmaline, red jaspers, those red, the garnet, those are all aligned with that first rooted. You have your second chakra, which is about your sexuality. It's about your passion in life. Carnelian, which is orange, is a great stone for that chakra. Your third chakra is about your will, your willpower, a wanting to move forward, and it's yellow. So use yellow colors like a citrine over your this uh, the sacral, okay? And then um, what's going to happen is you're going to have your heart chakra, 
and your heart chakra is green and pink. And that's when you're going to want to use the malachites and the rose quartz and the watermelon tourmalines to help open your, chakra, the, um, your heart chakra. Then we have our throat chakra, which is about communication. Are we speaking our truth? Are we holding back? And that is blue. So you're going to want to use turquoises and sodalite and uh, lapis lazuli, any of those blue stones. Then we go to our third eye, which is about our intuition and our inner knowing. And that's when we'll like to use either amethyst or labradorite or the stones that help open up and awaken us to a higher knowingness. Then we have at the very top, we have our crown chakra, which is white. And so these are perfect for quartz crystals and apophyllite and these stones, uh, Lemurian quartzes and all these. And these are helping us to open up and align to a higher divine guidance. So those are the chakras. They're wheels of energy. They're aligned with yoga. They're back to your yoga mat. And these are things and crystals to use working with the colors of the stone. Okay, so we're going to pull the last um, stone. And this comes from the Daily Crystal Inspiration card deck. And um, these are the cards. And then we're going to do one last pull. And thank you, Manduka. And thank you, Energy Muse. And thank you, Crystals. And how lucky are we to be able to know all this information because we're so very blessed. And the last message of the day is appetite. And I don't know if it could be the more perfect stone because you know what it says? It says, get out of your comfort zone. And if you're a yogi and you're doing this work and you're on a spiritual journey, like I'm sure we all are, if we're still here on this call, we're not doing this to stay safe. We're doing this to be bold, courageous, and break through so that we are very connected to Mother Earth. We're vibrating hard. We're on the map. We're breathing. We're getting out of our comfort zone so we can be the best version of ourselves that we possibly can be. So if you guys have additional questions or anything, you can find us at Energy Muse and Manduka and just feel free to DM us with your questions and we will make sure we answer them. Thank so thank you, you Manduka, and thank you for letting us be here today. It's an honor and a privilege and a pleasure. Stay strong. Let's keep ourselves grounded and aligned in our highest and best frequency. Thank Namaste. you, Manduka. Have a great day.